Hey guys, welcome to Natural Remedy X. Today I'm going to talk about some interesting article from University of Chicago. Essentially, it's a resistant bacteria from your gut travel to the surgical wounds and cause infections. For example, if you have surgery and your gut is colonized with some type of resistant bacteria, it may travel to the bloodstream and go to your surgical site where you have surgery. So in this picture, this is like um, Mephacillin resistant uh, Staph aureus, also called MRSA or MRSA. So Staph aureus, uh, usually they find on the surface of your skin. If you don't have open wound or uh, your immune system is, uh, is good, you should not be worried about it. So how does, you know, how does the resistant box travel from your gut? Uh, all the way to your surgical site. It doesn't make sense, right, to me. But this is a very interesting uh, story. Um, actually, it's a study. So this is from a uh, study is from uh, University of Chicago. So the title is Can Methicillin Resistant Staph Aureus Silently Travel from the Gut to the Wound and Cause Post-Operative Infection uh, Monitoring the Trojan Horse Hypothesis? So methicillin resistant, methicillin is a type of, uh, it belongs to the same class of antibiotics as penicillin. So penicillin, they have a story. Actually, uh, they discover penicillin by accident. So a Scottish scientist, Alexander Fleming, um, he left a petri dish, petri dish uh, with Staph aureus and I left it for several days in the lab. And after that, upon returning, he found that this, uh, the petri dish contaminated with mold. He was about to throw that away, and then he noticed the mold appeared to be dissolving the bacteria away. So further testing, uh, he discovered that it was actually something in the mold that stopped the growth of the bacteria. However, it wasn't until 1935 uh, that two researchers from Oxford University they separate and purify the penicillin from the mold. So this opened the door to a variety of antibiotics that has saved millions of lives from dangerous infections. So another story is Viagra. So, so it's been pretty interesting. Initially, Viagra is not for uh, erectile dysfunction. They, uh, Pfizer, they uh, actually, it was originally as a new treatment for angina. It's a heart condition that constricts the blood vessels are supplying to the heart. So the clinical trial uh, is very disappointing for preventing angina, but the volunteers report one very uh, particular interesting, surprisingly side effect is increased number of erections. So right now, Viagra become number one selling drugs for erectile dysfunction. So this is just discovered by accident. So let's go back to the article. So uh, methicillin resistance. So uh, and Staph aureus. Staph aureus is a gram-positive bacteria that we talked about earlier. Uh, it's found on the surface of your skin. And methicillin resistant is they resistant to penicillin or oxacillin. Oxacillin is also belong to the uh, same drug class of penicillin. If the bacteria is resistant to penicillin or oxacillin, is considered as uh, and is this, if the uh, bugs uh, the bacteria is Staph aureus. They, we call MRSA or MRSA. So it's a methicillin resistant Staph aureus is uh, MRSA. So they talk about this uh, Trojan horse theory is pretty interesting. Um, so we, we kind of talk about that uh, if your gut colonized with uh, resistant bacteria. So here you can see uh, the intestine in here, right? And then the in intestine is has some uh, methicillin resistant uh, aureus, uh, methicillin uh, staph aureus in, uh, on the surface of the gut. So the neutral fields uh, is one of the wiper cell that is like a first report, first respondent to the site of infections. So they patrol along the body, and then they see a whole bunch of uh, MRSA in the gut. So they're going to they are like a scavengers. They scavengers. They they're going to engulf all this um, MRSA. So here you can see um, the neutral field sampling the Newman content and then which is in the gut, just the neutral field like 
engulf all this bacteria. And then you can see the MRSA is inside the neutral fields, which is a viper cell. So still, still in a sleeping stage. So there's, they, it's a like dormant, they're sleeping inside the uh, neutral fields. So during physiological stress, uh, during physiolo physiological stress, or you have an inflammation, uh, they will, uh, and also, for example, uh, if you have surgery, so after surgery, you probably have inflammation, you're under physiological stress, then the neutral fields, you know, is the first respondent to the inflammation and all that jazz, right? So they go to the surgical site and then they dump all this uh, methicillin resistant aureus, uh, those bacteria to the surgical site. So it's pretty interesting because you would think that maybe uh, because of the surgery, you have infection in the surgical site and then you have infection. Uh, infection is not uh, based on this theory. It's because your gut is populated with all this, colonized with all this uh, methicillin resistant aureus, uh, resistant staph aureus. And then it travel along with the neutral fields and it go to the surgical site. So this is like a Trojan, Trojan horse hypothesis. So those MRSA hide inside this neutral fields. And, and then once they go to the surgical site, they dump all this uh, resistant bacteria. So why your gut will colonize with all this resistant bacteria? So if your body, uh, if your gut, um, for example, if you take, uh, if your microbiome in your body is not healthy, or your body got disrupted, uh, for example, you take antibiotics, it wipe out the good fluoride, the good bacteria, as well as the, the bad, uh, the bad material, and then uh, it leave off some resistant uh, bacteria in your gut. So these resistant bugs are still, uh, you know, sleeping in dormant stage, you know, they. And then they're sitting around in the gut, and then the wafer cells just scoop off this and then travel along um, to the surgical site. This is what the theory said. So, and then we go to here the study tried to mimic uh, a person to go to surgery. So, here they try to, uh, this is using a mice model. So, they try to mimic a person. Uh, their gut is already colonized with those resistant bacteria before they go to surgery. So they feed the uh, mice with MRSA, so they uh, make sure their, their gut is colonized with MRSA. Then they give uh, surgical prophylaxis antibiotics. For example, if you go to dental surgery, if you go to a certain type of surgery, they give you amoxicillin. You know, the day, I think 24 hours before the procedure, you have to take the antibiotics. So it wipes out the good fluoride and all that jazz. And also, before surgery, you cannot eat anything for 24 hours. So they do starvation for the mice for 24 hours as well. And then they do the procedure. They cut off the liver and then they do some uh, muscles, rectus muscles injury to the mice. And before they close off the wound, they swap they swap a culture. That means they um, on the surface of the wound they're going to swap some uh, they swap the culture and then they put in a petri dish and see if there's anything grow. Uh, to use as a control, they also after the closure, they actually deliberately um, painted some uh, live MRSA on the wound, and then they also swap the culture as well. So and then day two to day seven, they're going to assess the uh, intestine, if there any like bacteria grow in the intestine, and also they're going to examine the uh, rectus, if there's any uh, growth in the rectus muscles as well. So in here, <clears throat> you can see uh, this uh, dye in here, it shows um, there's some MRSA, the resistant bacteria in the stomach, and in the cecum, in the colon, in day two. By day seven, they have some in the uh, cecum uh, as well. And let's see, in the stool for the uh, mice, they have day one, they have tons of uh, like MRSA uh, shattered in the stool. And day two, they have a little bit more. And day seven, they have uh, less, like, less common. And also, they also check the MRSA in the cecum. On day two, they have a lot of... Um, MRSA in the cecum, and also uh, past day seven, they still have low level of uh, MRSA in the cecum. So 
So the result, uh, the result show that. So the the result come back. Um, the remember they do a swap right before they close off the wound and after they uh, close off the wound and there's no growth actually so that means there's no um, surgical contamination during the procedure and after the procedure and and actually it showed that the, the mice with um, the intestine uh, who has MRSA you know the, the, the gut they have MRSA already colonized in the gut the, those uh, resistant bacteria already like you know sitting in your gut they develop a surgical site infection at 32.5% uh, at the rate of 32.5%. So here 10% plus 22.5 is 32.5%. But this is a positive culture with abscess, 10% with uh, abscess, and 22.5% positive culture without abscess. So this is just, uh, I think this picture is show about uh, the the, the bacteria, the uh, step aureus, the uh, is inside the neutral fields. Remember, the neutral fields, the white blood cell, engulf the uh, bacteria and then travel along the bloodstream and go to the uh, surgical site. And you know, and then remember this picture we talked about earlier. Uh, let's see, hold on here. Yeah. So they. So they engulf this bacteria and then the resistant bacteria and then they dump it to the surgical site uh, when your body is under physiological stress or inflammation. So this is a pretty uh, interesting article. Uh, I mean, to, to us, you will never thought about, hey, if you have surgery, your infection should be in your surgical site, right? Why on earth? Those bacteria will travel all the way from your gut to the, I mean, <laughs> to the surgical site. It doesn't make perfect sense. But this study, it does show that. But although this, I mean, this study is pretty small study right now, but it is a very interesting point. So further study is required, but um, what's the take from this study? The important thing is your gut health is very important because it can harbor resistant bacteria and it can travel in the bloodstream to other area where there's information or physiological stress and also overuse of antibiotics will disrupt the uh, microbiome. So I know, uh, I mean, a lot of times uh, we try not to, uh, especially nowadays, the doctor try not to overuse the antibiotics, but sometimes it's difficult because of work, uh, because of your kids and uh, you have... Uh, you have so many things going on, you want to kill the infections, you know, and all that. But sometimes it's not the infection. Sometimes it's viral. We sometimes use antibiotics or viral infection. It doesn't make sense. So just for example, uh, a very common drug, uh, Cipro, uh, just five days of Cipro. Uh, uh, Cipro is very commonly used for UTI, uh, urine, urinary tract infections or respiratory infection in the community. Uh, a lot of doctors prescribe it and they use it very common. Even though you don't have any serious infection, sometimes in nursing nursing home they give it to the elderly. Uh, this is so unfortunate, but anyway, so just five days of Cipro, it can wipe out your uh, good bacteria. Um, it takes about six to nine months for for your body to um, to you know to repopulate all this uh, good bacteria and then push out the resist resistant bacteria because the good bacteria in your gut is very important for your health. So it takes about, if once you're on antibiotics just for five days, your good bacteria is going to wipe out as well as the, bad, uh, the bacteria. It takes about six to nine months for you to regenerate or repopulate all this good bacteria. So I'm not saying that uh, you should not use um, antibiotics, but you, you have infection, you definitely should use antibiotics, right? But if you have viral infection, you should not use antibiotics for sure. Come on. So uh, just use uh, antibiotics uh, in a in a you know in a very judicial uh, in a reasonable manner. I mean, you should not abusing it. I know that in Asia, you can get a lot of antibiotics with the prescription. A lot of people sell Medicaid themselves with antibiotics and all that jazz. I mean, they should be things twice before doing that. It doesn't make sense, you know? 
Well, anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to share with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with uh, all this scientific, um, you know, development or whatever. So, this is not a medical advice, and this is not meant to be used to treat or diagnose any medical condition. Consult always consult your physician about your health and your medical condition. You are responsible for your health. Remember, empower yourself to good health, stay wise, stay safe, and stay healthy.